topic will be a private cloud for business owners. Let me make sure I got all my buttons pushed here and we shall begin. Okay, my name is Chris France and I'll give you a, a, a little bit more of an intro here as we get started. But today, you know, why are we here? We're, well, it's to enable business owners to experience greater agility, improve performance, redundancy, security, and collaboration. All right, let's get into it. All right, I'll, I'll go, uh, go over some brief introductions of uh, Advanced 2000 as well as myself, talk a little bit about uh, what is a private cloud and, and why do you need IT, get a little bit into the, um, the costs and income statement and balance sheet. I'm, I'm trying to stay very non-technical at today's meeting. I have a lot of meetings with IT people. Today's meeting is, is with business owners that I interact with all the time. And talking about twice the IT for half the cost, then we'll wrap up. And I'm also going to show you live the, uh, the cloud. All right, who am I? Um, my name is Chris France, and I'm an IT guy. I've uh, been doing this for a long time, and I've spent 11 years as a CIO. And I kind of saw how this trend to consolidated uh, IT or, or cloud computing was, was progressing. I've worked at very large companies, IBM, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, as well as small and medium-sized firms like, like Little, which was a architect engineering construction firm, professional services firms, IT consulting firms, and so forth. I've authored several articles on cloud computing and the economics of, of IT and what's happening to businesses, as well as uh, speak at many, many events, including webinars. Who is Advanced 2000? Well, we're a, um, a full-service IT engineering firm. And over the years, we, we come to serve six primary industries. Sure, we'll, we'll provide computers to anybody that needs a Windows computer. But over time, we've developed business domain knowledge in the what I call the AEC industry, uh, construction, the healthcare industry, government. Uh, a lot at the state and local level, we're starting to get into some of the federal uh, government work. Education, K through 12, as well as higher ed and professional services, which include you know, law firms, CPA firms, uh, and so forth, and uh, manufacturing logistics. We have uh, solutions to fit all, all sorts of IT needs. Uh, of course, we've got private cloud computing, which is what I'm talking about today, and that's really kind of a culmination of all the other services we've provided through the years, business continuity and, and planning, help desk, integrated telephony, you know, IP phones, IT strategy and audit consulting, and of course, maintenance and technical support, both in the data center as well as on-site and middleware and security services. So we're, we're an IT company, and we've been in business uh, over 20 years. We're probably 150 people in eight offices nationwide. All right, I'm going to use some, I'm trying to, like I said, I'm trying to keep this non-technical as, as much as I can, and I'm going to draw some analogies of what's going on in this, in this cloud space. And the current, first I want to talk about the current IT practices. Basically, got the bunch of cars, we're, we're trying to build a car. The car is the technology we need to operate our business for whatever reason, make deliveries, transport people, whatever. But here's all the car parts. So this is what we're doing today in IT. We buy all the parts for the car, and then, well, first we've got to hire the guys that know what kind of parts to buy. We need, you know mechanics and managers and so forth. Then we buy all the parts. Then we've got to have a place to put the parts together, a garage, and we end up maintaining it all ourselves. So we're, we're constantly building an IT infrastructure. We're constantly reinventing the wheel, and we're building cars from a bunch of parts over and over again. And so that's kind of what's, what I want to talk about. Well, there's, a, there's a better way now, and take some of this uh, analogy further. So I said, all right, well, what is a private cloud? How is that different? We're not buying parts anymore. Well, think of it this way. I need a, I need a car, and I decided I, I need a Honda Pilot for my business. And I'm going to go in, and I'm going to choose to their website. I'm going to choose the model and the options. I know kind of what I want. I know what I need, the size, mileage, and so forth. Kind of know my budget. And I start picking the models, the colors, the accessories, everything I need. I know what I need as a business owner. I don't I tell people, I just, I, I just need to know what time it is. I don't need to know how to build the clock. I don't need to know what kind of colors these are and how they're fastened to the, the paint and, and what it takes to maintain them and so forth. And at the same time, I don't, I don't build it myself. I have a dealer that 
works with the manufacturer, brings it all together, and all I do is show up, they hand me the keys, of course I give them the money, and I drive off. That, that's really what's happening with, with IT. We're, we're putting it into dealers, if you will, cloud providers, making it very much uh, an option based uh, on your business, and then letting you focus on your business and not building cars. So unless your business is building cars, you just want to buy a car and not have to deal with it. Same thing that's happened. So that's kind of in a nutshell what a private cloud is. And that's really kind of where Advanced 2000 is playing. You call it your IT dealer that has all the options and all the parts you need already put together, with all the mechanics and all the managers to make things happen. All right, now you hear about this, this public cloud. You've got Microsoft Office 365 and you've got Google Docs and you've got all these other clouds, Salesforce.com and so forth. And, and how do I use that? Well, this is, this is what, what in effect you're doing when you have a, a cloud provider like that. So, you know, Microsoft sells only Microsoft products. So that'd be like going to this Honda dealer that only um, sells the chassis. That's all they do. They sell the chassis and they got a really good chassis and, and it's an assembly and that's what I want. And then this Honda dealer, all they sell is, is the frame, all right? And I, and I want to get that frame from them. And then this Honda dealer down here sells the engine. And I'm oversimplifying this, but you get my point. And now I'm going to have all these assemblies shipped to me. So I still need some kind of a, a garage to put all these things together and make sure that the chassis works with this engine and that engine works with that, that body and, and so forth. And so that's really what you're doing. You're, you've got multiple dealers or multiple cloud providers that you're kind of piecing together uh, an IT infrastructure or a car in this analogy for your business. Yeah, it, it, it'll work and if it's small enough it's, it, 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 you know you might be able to do that but over time as things get bigger and bigger you're like why do I why do I have all these dealers that I'm trying to integrate because you know and so can I find one dealer that has it all? That's really the difference in the a private cloud and a public cloud. Public clouds are patching together all these services and you're still having to have some level of garage and mechanics to put it all together versus having somebody own it all. All right, let's see. I'm going to try to get away from that analogy now, but that's kind of what we're talking about here, the private cloud. All right, what, is, what has changed and, and why the buzz for this cloud? What, what's going on? What, what's different? Well, for the first thing is the data center compute power costs are dropping. So all the cost of memory and CPU and switch infrastructure and, and, and all that fiber optics, the costs are really coming down uh, in a data center. The problem is they're in a data center. It could be hundreds or thousands of miles away from me. How do I get to it? Well, there's an, the other thing that's happening is the fiber optics. The United States has a glut of fiber optics, a tremendous amount of competition, and the costs are, are falling through the floor, and the bandwidth available is going through the roof. So years ago, I used to be able to buy, gosh, a, a T1 circuit for uh, $1,000 a month, which was like 1.5 megabytes. Now for $1,000 a month, I could get probably close to a 30, 40, in some cases, a 50 meg circuit. And that just is, is just climbing. Soon I'll be able to get a 100 meg circuit for 1000 bucks a month. And so when we're talking about those kind of speeds, and we're throwing around 100, 500 gig circuits all the time now going cross country. And I'm, I'm actually building a LAN over across the country, whereas before it was a WAN, wide area network. And so the, uh, the cost of, of fiber optics are coming down. On top of that, so I can get to the data center now and take, a use, take advantage of all this low cost power and compute power. Well, at the same time, the remote access protocols have greatly improved. So not only do I put my back-end servers in here like we used to, like maybe email or your CRM system, but I can actually put desktops into a data center, Windows desktops that I can get to remotely that has all the power I need for these desktops, is, is co-located next to the storage, works very fast. So here again, you can focus on what your business needs. So those are the three main things, a perfect storm, if you will. I've got the data center. I can get to the data center, and I can actually run remote applications on from, from any location. And I'll, I'll kind of show you how we do that. All right. What IT services does your business need? I talk to business owners all the time, and they say, 
Yeah, my IT guy tells me I need a, a VoIP system, a ter uh, ten terabyte fiber channel SAN, and I go, why? What are you gonna? What are you? What are you doing that? What are you gonna use with that for? What I try to focus on is what's your business model? Why are you in business? How do you make money? How, some businesses are professional services. They turn knowledge into cash. Maybe consultants, architects, uh, lawyers, CPAs. They turn knowledge into cash. Some sell widgets, parts, you know, flowers, whatever. Sometimes it's digital assets, maybe ebooks or something like that. You can provide a service, you know, healthcare providers, doctors, whatever. And um, some of them, you know, some some businesses, it's a combination of all of these. And then some are, are going totally online, you know. Whereas before they might have sold widgets in a retail store, having a hard time keeping up with that, going to an online store. This is the whole uh, bricks and mortar, blockbuster, Netflix, Amazon.com cloud going on right now. So business models are changing. So you got to know first. What's your business model, and then what technology services do you need for those that that business model? At the same time, new technology services also may change your business model. So it goes. That's why I have these arrows going both ways. You've got to kind of. So this is where I like to hang out, and this is where business owners should hang out. If you start getting into the weeds, at, like I said, how to build the clock. You're, you're really not focusing on your business. So, you know, say we're this is our business model. We're turning knowledge into cash as a consultant, and and I say, well, what kind? How do you do that? What kind of services do you need? Well, I need to communicate either by phone, email, video, chat. I said, okay, those are services. Uh, mobile. I need I need to be mobile. I need to I need to be able to work in the office, at home, in in the hotel, wherever I'm at. Well, and I, I've also got applications that I that I need that's going to help me make revenue, earn revenue. And then I've got other applications, maybe my financial system, integrated financial system, that's going to help me save money and reduce costs. So I need both of those, uh, like a lease management application. And then I need to have access. I, you know, I'm creating a lot of information about my company, my customer data, my sales orders, and so forth. I, I have a lot of com company information that my employees need access to. And so they need to be able to get to that data, and it needs to be backed up and protected. You know, if I lose all my data, man, I'm going to be in a world of hurt. I could be out of business. And then it's, it's, avail it's availability has to be 24-7. You know, most businesses today cannot run without a computer. You know, I thought about that saying, how could I build a business that did not run with a computer? And it's, it's getting very hard to think about that, uh, to actually do that. So your, your, your technology is critical to the success of your business. And so that's where I think a lot of, a lot of the people uh, are getting bogged down today. Like I showed you that, that, that pile of car parts. Well, the parts involved with all these services, you know, to communicate, I might need a voice voice over IP PBX running an H323 codec for video, and oh yeah, I need SMTP gateways, blah, 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 blah. Mobility, I need to have a VPN, IPsec tunnels, I need to have 8 gig machines, 10 terabyte fiber channels, blah, 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 more stuff. And so when you're focused on services, I could build these services with $10,000. Or I can build these services with, you know, two hundred thousand dollars. And how does the business owner know which one is best? And so that's really where you got to kind of focus on your business model and the services, and get just enough technology to 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 achieve your business goals. So that's why you need IT. All right. This is a reminder. Oh yeah, I'm going to log into the cloud now and show you what I'm talking about from an IT perspective. Here's my. I'm on a laptop right now, a Lenovo laptop, and I'm sitting in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm going to bring up the VMware View client, and I'm going to. And I'm going to talk more about this, but I want you to see it first. Okay. If I can type it. Type in my password, and you hit connect. see here I'm going to go full screen and this is a Windows desktop you can see it looks just like just it looks just like my laptop you know whoops I'll go back to it looks just like my laptop in fact it's very easy to forget where you're at I do my start panel it's got all the programs that I would need right here I put a few in the the dock outlook you know here's my you know this is actually I'm sitting in Charlotte on a remote connection and this desktop is running in Western New York data center. It's 
just outside of Buffalo is in our data center. And so you have, and it just moves around like that. And I can close this. It opens up pretty quick. I'll do a Word document. So this is me typing in the cloud um, very fast. I don't, don't want to save that. And another, I'll just show you how full featured this is getting now. This is our website. If you go to our website, advanced2000.com, I just want to show you a real quick little snippet and hit our YouTube channel. You can actually play videos over the, the cloud, the streaming videos. And there's a whole bunch of videos we have here. I'm just going to show you this one little animation we have. Advanced 2000, moving your IT infrastructure to the cloud. We are the only solution that gives you access to both your files and your software. Okay, you got the idea. If you want to go watch the rest of that, you can go to our website. But this is a, a, a cloud desktop. And so very easy. If I say I've got something cranking on here, maybe my financials, things, reports are, are printing or whatever, I can, I can disconnect my desktop. It'll go, uh, it'll keep on doing what it's doing and I can go out, customer meeting, go home, have dinner with my family, whatever, which is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to disconnect this desktop and it's going to run. All right. And so that was on a Windows desktop for my laptop. I just wanted to kind of also show you this. I was in Atlanta uh, yesterday. Uh, visiting with a, a, a customer, and I was in a coffee shop, and it was it was pitiful internet connection. I was on had my iPad, and the uh, I don't know it was maybe like a one meg internet connection, probably like a DSL or whatever. And I said, forget this, it's too slow. So I just hopped onto my 4G data plan, and this is this is my data speed test for my 4G connection in Atlanta. So I had 18 meg down and 10 meg up, plenty of bandwidth to do cloud computing. So I won't go live with my iPad, but I'll just show you a few screenshots here. here here's my iPad home screen. I did a screenshot. I'm, you see my Verizon. And uh, here's the VMware View client, just like I showed you from my laptop. There's an app for that. And uh, I, I click on that, and then it launches me into that desktop. I just, and it looks a little different. You've got these, these little gestures and touch screens for your iPad. Uh, but you can connect to your mouse and keyboard and so forth. It takes a little practice, but you can get in there and, and do some stuff. And this is the desktop. And so I've, I've got full mobility uh, in this private cloud. I don't have to worry about all this IT infrastructure. And this is the cloud desktop. You can, you can load up as many applications as your business needs as you move about the, the country, so to speak. How do, we, how do we get access to this cloud, this private cloud? Well, you think about it. We, we've carved out a a shared private infrastructure for our customers and, and, and a private cloud, a section of our data center, if you will. And we don't need this Apple now. And the, um, so how do we connect to it? Well, you can, you can, there's, a, there's a, a plethora of options. Of course, you can continue to use your older machines. You don't have to, to junk all your local uh, PCs if you don't want to. Uh, that will still work. You just install the VMware View client. It runs on Windows XP, Windows 7, whatever, and, and launch into the cloud. We also, you, of course, you can put it on your laptop. This is the way, the way I roll uh, on a laptop. Uh, we can put it on our smartphones now. For a lot of people, doing a Word document on your smartphone is kind of tedious. It's small. But a lot of our engineers, our cloud engineers, use their smartphone to get into the cloud desktops to fix things, reset the servers, you know, provide maintenance and support. Of course, the iPad, I just showed you that. You can get into that, any kind of tablet. And here's another thing that's very interesting, kind of going back old school, mainframe days. These are dumb terminals or zero client terminals. Uh, this happens to be a YSP20. There's also all kinds of uh, HP uh, cells versions. This is a, a Samsung uh, high def monitor that has an integrated uh, terminal, basically PC over IP or Citrix or whatever you ha we happen to be using. We use all the, the protocols. And, and so you can have no data sitting in your office. You, you plug in a mouse, a keyboard, a monitor on these things, and it just launches that remote desktop I showed you. And it's very secure. You don't have any local data. Healthcare uh, industry likes that for the, the HIPAA and the patient privacy uh, concerns. Uh, this one, if you need a monitor, it's got it integrated and so forth. And you can kind of daisy chain. You can have two monitors and so forth. And, and the, the ability to move around and access different types of devices in your data is very critical. A lot of our, our clients like this because, you know, before they had their IT sitting in their office, no generator, no multiple HVAC units, power goes out, you know, 
HVAC units go down, computers overheat, things shut down, it's a bad thing. Computers like to be in a data center. And so this, as a, all these services actually run out of a data center with multiple generators and HVAC units and such. So, so uh, very, very good way to work. Once you, once you get used to working like this, you don't want to go back to the old way. Now, now the next question I get is, all right, how much does it cost? Can I afford it? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, our, our smallest cloud customer, private cloud customer, is a three-person firm. So would this work for one person? Probably not. You, you can certainly, you could probably get into it for a couple hundred bucks, but most people don't want to spend that for one person, but you could. But it's very, it's very cost effective. And it's, and it's more times than not, it's way less than what you're currently spending on your IT with not as many services. So if we look at the services versus the parts analogy, I took a, a, a representative 20-person office that needed to be able to communicate with phones and email and uh, I'll call it cloud connectivity so that you can get to the cloud. They wanted to go mobile. They wanted to be able to work wherever. They, uh, they had a few uh, revenue and cost-saving applications that, that required about three servers. They needed the company information, which was about a, a 500 gigs or a half a terabyte of storage with, auto, with uh, automated backups and data protection. It's available 24/7, included the IT labor, and uh, and and I say redundant IT labor. How many firms, especially small firms, they can barely afford one IT person, let alone two or three? Uh, what happens if that IT person quits, or is at the beach and you can't get a hold of them, or whatever? Uh, there's been businesses that are in a world of hurt. Where with a uh, Advanced 2000, we've got many engineers and they all back each other up so they can go on vacation or whatever and there's other people that can keep your cloud running. So all that added up for 20 person office is about 71,000 a year. Compare that to the parts and pieces that this 20 person would have done in the old way. Just a single IT person is 75,000 a year. So they would leave a look so you're basically for the cost of the IT person, you're getting the whole infrastructure plus the IT person persons. And now in this scenario, you got to buy the IT person or hire a consultant, whatever, at a high rate, and then buy all the parts, the, the phone systems, the servers, the storage, the SANs. And, you know, these parts, depending on what kind you buy and, and how redundant they are, could be, you know, fifty to 200000 So that, that's really what's happening. This is, you know, you, you uh, think about your, my car analogy. Do you go and buy a, a Honda Pilot for $25,000 and drive it off the lot? Or do you buy all the parts to build a pilot, which and the labor? It could cost you, you know, hundred, two hundred thousand dollars to build a pilot yourself. And so that's that's really what's happening here. A um, couple comments on uh, income statement and balance sheets. I talked to the to business owners about this. Now I don't claim to be a CPA by any means, but you know I know what business owners uh, care about and what they're thinking thinking about. They're trying to make their business grow. They're trying to serve their customers, reduce their costs, and grow their business. And there's a couple strategies that, that uh, I've seen some of our clients take uh, while adopting these cloud strategies. There's uh, one, and I'll kind of walk through these, but you can, you can reduce your IT spend. Basically, keep the technology you got and, and try to reduce your cost, and that, that basically goes right to your bottom line, increases your profit. Others are looking to expand their business and keep their IT spend about the same. So rather than, than saving money, I'm going to keep spending the same amount of money on IT, but I'm going to be able to handle a larger volume of business. So that's one way to grow. Some are, some are doing a little of both, you know, reducing costs and expanding their business. You know, business owners care about EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, and amortization, and business valuation. Is my business getting more valuable over time? And so uh, you, you take a, a typical business, maybe your annual revenues are, are $2, two million, and if you got your IT local, which is local versus the cloud, you know your revenue stays the same in this one scenario. Your costs are about $1.8 million. Now, this includes all your costs, not just your IT costs, uh, your staff and so forth. And you end up with about a $200,000 profit, say 10%. If you're able to move to the cloud and save $100,000 in your IT, which is very common, happens all the time with a firm this size, that's why I use that number, uh, that goes right to your bottom line and, and increases your profit by 5%. That's just reducing your IT costs. Same thing with revenue. Uh, a lot of people, especially in this, this economy, they're trying to grow revenue and they're seeing, okay, well now with this technology and the mobility, I, I'm not confined just to my city or one part of the country. 
I can I can actually sell to the entire country, and I'm looking at increasing my revenue by you know 30 35 percent. And so uh, while keeping my IT costs the same, and this is that, that scenario there, this has the, the, the biggest bang. If you can grow your revenue and keeping your costs the same, that's where you get huge return. And here's a little bit of both. I added uh, you know, 30% revenue growth with 100,000 reduction. So your mileage will vary depending on your business, your business plan, your business model, and the IT that you need to, uh, to achieve your business goals. But this is what's this is what the cloud is doing to your income statement. Let me get back to that. All right. Balance sheet, same thing. You know, uh, assets minus liabilities plus owner equity balances out, and the uh, the IT infrastructure rapidly depreciates. And so it's it's worse than driving a car. Everybody says you know your your car depreciates so much driving it off the lot. IT assets are even worse. Go out and buy a. Uh, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. I think I just off the top of my head, a hundred thousand dollars in storage is not uncommon, particularly if you have to get two of them for redundancy. And uh, you gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta go and buy that. You know, one, two months later, you'd be lucky if you try to eBay that to get half of it, uh, fifty thousand dollars. So it's rapidly depreciating asset. All right, but you say, say in this this scenario, you financed it, you went and got a lease, so you've got a hundred thousand dollar liability. And you've got a fifty thousand dollar asset, so you just you just killed fifty thousand dollars of your owner's equity. And same thing with a cash purchase. You went out. I didn't want to lease it, but I paid cash for it. You reduced your cash cash assets. You only added the fifty thousand IT asset, and that's really basically it's a hit to the owner's equity. Which cloud? It's it's a wash. You don't own anything. You don't take. You're not taking on depreciating assets. And so it it really really helps uh, get the business in line. Plus, you get the IT that you need. I, I say this a lot. The uh, you get twice the IT and or half the cost, and I and I'll kind of talk a little bit about the strategies some of our clients use. Uh, I mentioned it with the income statement, but it, you know, back to my analogies again. A, a lot of our, uh, particularly our small and medium sized uh, business customers, and, and and to us that's you know maybe under the small ones are under a hundred, uh, under a hundred people, maybe under fifty. But the, our, our cloud customers are up in the, the thousands, you know, up to 2,000 people. And I'll call them, they, they've, got a, they've got a, you know, okay uh, IT infrastructure. It works for them. They've got a basic server, and, uh, but it's, it's, it's a bicycle compared to what it could be. And, uh, and, and they have a bicycle, and they have outages, and it takes them three or four days to, to get their server back online, and they hope they have their data backed up and so forth. But, but they're, they're, they're pedaling along and, 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 and making money a, a little bit. So a lot of them are saying, hey, with the cloud, I can, get, I can go from a bicycle to a nice Honda Accord and for my business and for the same money. So I'm going to do that. You know, other, other folks already have a nice Honda Accord for an IT infrastructure, and they can actually get two of them, two, you know, more redundancy. Uh, and do that, do it that way, or they can upgrade for the same money and get a, a, a tricked-out suburban that they really need for their business. You get the point here. You've got the economics are changing in IT, and you can decide whether you want to, uh, you know, save money, you want to upgrade, or some of them are are saving so much money you're trying to to uh, capture new revenue. They can actually get into the, uh, uh, be able to afford some things that they thought they could never afford, like a private jet. You, you get my my point. Uh, they're, they're looking at things saying, all right, I can actually get technology and I can do things. I can uh, create a business model to compete with the big boys that I could never have done before. So that's really what the cloud is doing for these, these businesses. A couple more uh, real case studies of ours. Um, the names have been changed to protect the innocent, but we've got some, uh, one client that had a thousand computers, uh, 16 office, uh, another client that had, um, 20 offices and was just looking at a tele telephony. It does not have to be an all or nothing thing. You don't have to be all in or, or something. You can, you can be part partial into the cloud. And then there's a, here's a smaller company that had 100, 100 computers, 100 employees with maybe five offices. And this just kind of shows you the differences in, in the of, of strategy. The distributed uh, strategy is, is kind of the way most firms are operating now. All of your IT is in your office and every office has a, a, a duplication of their IT. Uh, you can build your own private cloud. A lot of the concepts that I'm talking about today, they're, they're, they're not proprietary by any means. Uh, a lot of firms have tried to build their own cloud and consolidate their IT into one location, and, and that's, a that's a strategy.
But what I'm talking about today is a, a hosted private cloud. Basically, Advanced 2000 is your agent. We've already got a, a private cloud. We've got a, economies of scale, and we're, we're kind of have, uh, having multiple clients in the same thing. So this is kind of what, what we've seen in this scenario. So if you have a, a 16 office, 1,000 computers, and you're, uh, you're distributed, you're going to spend about $11 million a year on your IT. If you create a private cloud yourself, you're going to save money by consolidating, but it will be like $8.3 million. If you're going to host it with us, that's leveraging our economies of scale and infrastructure. It's about half of, of what your, the distributed is, and, and it goes and so forth. Distributed is the most expensive, which is the way most people are doing now. Going private saves some money. Going hosted private saves even more, and you get the, the point here. And it's not uncommon to see uh, our clients are, seeing, are realizing between 35 and 65% savings, depending on how, how big they are, how, how spread out, and how much IT they've already deployed. And so I challenge all these business owners. I say, look, um, compare your cost. You know, add up all the cost of your IT, your hardware, your software, your telecom, your consultants, everything, your data center, your electricity, and compare it to what a, a private cloud would cost. And then, uh, then it, it's not a hard decision to, to figure out how to how to migrate. All right, and we're kind of getting to the end here. And how do we begin? Well, there's, there's a, we have a, a, a three-phased approach. Try the cloud, use the cloud, and embrace the cloud. And under try the cloud, we realize, you know, hey, if you're a 100, 200, 300 person firm, you're, you're not going to move your whole business at once. Uh, we, want, we want to give away uh, free demo accounts. In fact, what, what you saw me log into was a demo account. It's a cloud virtual desktop. Many people have never been on a cloud desktop, or they've, they've tried a remote desktop in the past, and they say, oh, it's always too slow. Well, like I said, the technologies and the fiber optics have greatly improved, and it's, and it's, worth, a try to, it's worth trying it again. So we let people play with these demo accounts for, I don't know, a week or two, and uh, they, they try it out on different devices. They load it up on their iPads and their laptops and their old computers. They try different Internet connections, you know, one at work, one at home, coffee shop, whatever. And you'll see what, what a bad Internet connection will do. And uh, they kind of get the idea. They say, all right, I get this. I, I like it. I, I think this will work for us. And then they say, but, you know, we're a 100-person firm. Let's, let's do a little uh, proof of concept or a, a pilot. We call it a, a pilot uh, project. So most of our pilot projects have been between, I'd say, five and ten people, and there's a clear goal. You know, whether this client wanted to uh, try to figure out how to work over a large geographic distance, or they had a particular uh, business challenge that needed gobs of hardware and computing power that they didn't have. Whatever the reason is, they they, they picked the real world business problem and the people that were charged with solving it, and they put it in the, in our cloud. And we ask for a minimum of a two-month commitment, but it could go as long as you want for a pilot project. Now, this, pri this pilot is not free, but it's very reasonable. A, a, a five-person, two-month pilot is about $2,000. It's like 700 bucks to set it up and $700 a month for service. But it, it lets you kind of get an idea of, of not only how the technology is different and how it's changing, but also how your business and your workflow and your processes are going to change. Because I tell people, I said, do not blast the cloud out to your entire company because your workflow is going to change. You've got to have all that worked out and provide the necessary training and, and, and onboard people slowly, which is really leading to the last step there, which is embrace the cloud. After their pilot, uh, our clients know they know how they want to work. They know the, the limitations and the capabilities of the cloud, and they work through their new um, processes and then we put a plan. We work together and we put a, a plan to migrate maybe by office, maybe by project team, maybe by application, maybe it's a phone system that's 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 aging and, and it's on its last legs and, and maybe we, we move that to the cloud first. Whatever. Uh, it all depends on the client's needs. And and we offer that in one, three and five year contracts, uh, you know, five being the best pricing and so forth. So that's really um, the, uh, the, the process to kind of onboard and, and try before you buy. Before I take some questions, I, I did want to leave you uh, with one, uh, some further reading to uh, look at this. This is a very good book. I, I've read it. Uh, the Cloud is the New Utility. Uh, this is, I don't know if you've heard of Nicholas Carr. This is a non-technical book. It's a book for business owners. 
And it, I, I always joke, I, say, I said to people, I said, you know, Advanced 2000 was building the cloud while Nicholas Carr was writing about building the cloud. And he kind of he kind of goes through uh, you know, history from an industrial revolution, how things technology changed businesses, how things moved to utility. You know, going from fire to candles to electricity to the light bulb to electric utilities to computers, and then computers as a utility, which is the cloud. And and basically, this is kind of the the trend, the next trend that's happening. With that, I will take some questions, and I'm going to get on here and look. And see what we have. Okay, got a few. Um, security. If I put all my eggs in your basket, how secure is your basket? Well, that's, that's a good question. Security is is very important, and and, and I, I tell people like while while we're not the Pentagon, and spending a billion dollars a year on security. And by the way, they get hacked too. Um, I won't say we we won't we'll never get hacked, but we we put a lot of things in place. We've got high-end uh, Alcatel lucent switches and technology. We've got a data center, biometric access. We we hire third-party consultants to do periodic audits and penetration tests, and we uh, and and I would say most of our um, clients, uh, all the small and medium-sized businesses, the security that we have is way more than what they have today. And so uh, we've we've got, and there's things that I, I won't say on a webinar uh, if if clients are very serious. We actually invite them to our our data center. We can go into more of the security details that we use. Um, software licensing. Can I use my software, or do I have to rebuy it from from you? Uh, yes and no. Some of the software we can use. Obviously, we try to use as as much of your IT assets as we can, so that you don't have to rebuy things. But there are things that you do have to uh, to rebuy as you move to the cloud. You know, Microsoft um, is is one. They're saying, okay, you've got a, a, an operating system that you paid for on your laptop, and now you're putting an operating system in a data center. You've got to pay for that operating system. So some things we can reuse, and some things we cannot. But a lot of times, people are in need of uh, upgrades anyhow, so they upgrade in, into the cloud. My IT staff. Can can you work with them, or do I have to downsize them? Um, yes, <laughs> uh, both of those scenarios. Like I said, you business owners are generally not in the IT business. You need just enough IT to achieve your business goals, and no more. Sometimes that requires, you know, if you become more efficient, you might need five IT people instead of ten. Sometimes. Your IT person, you've got one guy, and he's totally overloaded And what you need to do. So we end up working with him and becoming a team. So there's the advanced 2000 cloud team, and then there's your the client cloud uh, IT team. And so there's different ways. We've had clients that have outsourced to us, and the IT people came and started working in the cloud and actually loved working in the cloud because they got their hands on more technology and more learning opportunities that they ever could have working for a you know, 20, 50 person firm. So we've got a lot of flexibilities. We can work with your staff, or we can, um, you know, be your IT staff. And a couple more questions here. The does it make sense if I only have one office? We talk about multiple offices. Uh, absolutely. Like I said, the, my smallest cloud client is a three-person single office firm, and. Uh, they even the, even a small firm has to spend money on IT, and they can do it more efficiently. And I tell people, the mo volume changes everything. The more people you have, and the more offices you have, your IT costs will go up exponentially if you have a distributed IT strategy. Whereas you can expand people and offices in the cloud, and your IT costs will go up linearly because it's all growing in in one data center. And so if you're on the small end of the scale, 5, 10 people, the, the, your IT costs are going to be about the same, whether you um, do it in-house or whether you move to the cloud. The thing is, with the cloud, you're going to have way more capabilities, virtual technology, redundant, and so forth. But as you get larger, that spread is very obvious on, you know, you're, like I said, it's, it's, it's a geometric progression that you, have a, that you don't have if you stay in the cloud. Uh, so a large firm, uh, you know, 200, 500 person firm, they they could easily save 50 percent on their IT spend. And the last question before we wrap here is, um, 
do I lose all control of my data and IT by moving to the cloud? Uh, no, actually, you get you get more control. You know, do you have do you lose control over your car when you buy it from a dealer, or or do you have more control if you put all the parts together yourself? You actually you actually have uh, have more control with the cloud. You can move your data at any time. You're not you're not uh, locked into us. And see another one. Another question came in from uh, from Dave. Are you price positioned to partner with a services reseller? Uh, yes, we have um, reseller options. If you uh, want to uh, talk about that in more detail, talk to me offline. Uh, we've got partners out there that that um, say, "Hey, I've already got a customer base. I've got a business." Uh, maybe I'm an IT business, maybe I'm a service provider comes, providing some kind of technical services or training, and I see, I see your private cloud as being uh, very conducive to my business and me helping my clients. So is there ways for us to, to partner? And, and, and actually, I've got probably um, four or five partners like that already. But it's not, it's not just like um, Hawken products, you know, you know, like a traditional reseller. It's, it's more of a solution. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking with business owners. We're trying to provide services that the business owner needs at a cost-effective um, price. Okay, that is uh, that is it for today. That's all the questions that I have. I want to thank you for attending the, my webinar today, and uh, please follow up with me if uh, you'd like more information. Take care and have a good day.